What's up, what's up, what's up? It's Brand Man Sean. And I'm Corey. And we are back with another episode of No Labels Necessary Podcast. You can catch us every Tuesday, every Thursday. YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music. Check us out whatever you stream your podcast here. Having conversations at the intersection of currency and creativity. Now, we already know this is No Labels. We like to talk about people doing things different. And sometimes doing things different gets you in trouble. <laughs> you know what I mean? And in today's today's conversation we want to talk about doing things that'll get you in trouble that also get you attention and how eh, it, is what it, is. it can go bad right <laughs> <laughs> but that still has greater implication on how many of these platforms are the new record labels mm -hmm. the record labels had control now these tech platforms have control now where are we going let's open it up with here a streamer not an artist but a streamer who has made some music? Kai Sinat got banned off of Twitch. Check out this quick clip, and then we're going to get into details of why this is so important, not just for content creators in general, but artists and everyone. They dead banned me today, bro. Why, though? I'm trying to figure that out. I'm trying to see. The day we pulled a hobble in, they banned me today. It's like it's like everything is like just get tweaked. Like, crazy. For a minute, too. What? For a minute? For a Hello. minute. All right, so he gets banned for... A minute, in his words, right? It's ain't a oh, single day ban. It's not a one week ban, and he had plans. All right, I got plans. of some things I wanted to do today, big things, and I got banned off the platform. We know that we've had instances where Facebook goes down mm -hmm. for whatever reason. Instagram has been down for whatever reason. But then you have situations where no, nah, Facebook not down. We good. Instagram not down. We good. Twitch not down. We good you down yeah <laughs> <laughs> and that's something that i don't think many artists completely account for just because they're not at a certain stage where that's a real thing however seeing that this can happen shows where the power is mm -hmm. right now under what rules are they making this happen like we talked about speed what what speed did all right, bro. Understandable. You need to get banned. All right, <laughs> go sit down somewhere to figure your life out. Jadeon, he gets banned, and he himself said, "Hey, man, it was violation of terms of service, but I want to get back on." All right, and we'll we can play that clip. But should we play it before we do the breakdown? Let's let's play this clip actually, just so y'all can get a sense of the mentality of what it's like to be out off of a platform and want to get back on, or and how much they can have. You're a massive base in a choco. So a lot of you guys already know I got banned on Twitch. My first day being partnered. If you don't know, go look it up real quick. It'll be really easy to find out why. But I'm not here to talk about why I got banned because I deserve to get banned. It is what it is. I broke TOS. But what I am here to talk about is I'm here to ask Twitch to make it fair. Because when Twitch... Let's be real. That's like Will Smith apologizing about the Chris Rock shit. Like... I was wrong. I'm talking about it's that type of energy, oh. like a celebrity. I made a big mistake. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I have to, you know, be political yeah. and say the right things and show that, hey, I, I feel some remorse for my behavior. Please get me back on. That's This is what this feels like. Yeah, super Hollywood right? apology. It, it yeah. definitely, this is what it feels like. But I get it. By the way, it's important because no matter what, we say these are just the terms of service. But the reality is these are all people in these businesses. Yeah. All right. So- if you are like AF hey, them and I don't care, you think it shouldn't go be taken into account? Only the rules should be taken into account. It's gonna get taken into yeah, account. There's a, there's a manager somewhere in the back office that you don't even know exists. Like, all right, bet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you, and his manager's like, look, man, you see, dudes are remorseful. Mm -hmm. He's not shitting on the platform. Like, come yeah. on, let's let's make this thing happen because we missing out on the money. But let, let, let let's finish this apology. Got a 14 day suspension. But after other people reacted to my band and voiced their opinion of that not being severe enough, my 14-day suspension went to a perma ban, which I feel isn't fair. I feel that Twitch should keep my 14-day suspension, especially for a first-time offense, and not let outside factors determine you know me being perma banned. Uh, obviously, like what I did was wrong. It is what it is. But how am I supposed to do better the next time if I can never get a next time? So. I ask you guys to go on Twitter and use hashtag Twitch, free Jadeon. We're trying to get it trending so we can get back on Twitch. 
because I love the platform. I love interacting with you guys, and I miss it. And I will be doing better in the future, but I can't do better in the future if I'm part of my band. So that's all you need to hear, right there. Great point. I miss it. I can't do better if I'm banned. Part yeah. band. That, I mean, you know, that's the that's the new cancel culture response. Like, hey, man, you got to give me an opportunity to grow. Yeah. Right. Which is a very fair response. But man, getting permaban. So by the way, what did what did he do? He basically did an orchestrated attack on another British person's fan base, mm-hmm. where you you just say tell all your followers, "Yo, go get them." Yeah. All right. For lack of sick better em. words, yeah, you, you sick. <laughs> them, right. So you could call that bullying or whatever. Now, again, against terms of service, sure he was permaban. But with that being said, having such loyalty to these platforms is not the smartest move, right? Oh, yeah. So we we talk about, oh, yeah, get people's phone numbers, get their addresses and all that stuff. But it goes beyond just phone numbers and addresses because you still don't want to lose your marketing stream, right? Like, yeah, how do I continue to get new fans and new, new people? Yeah, word of mouth is strong and you can create a really great text campaign, a really great email campaign. But what it's going to do in most cases is help you monetize or build community within what you already have, right? Deepen the bond, not necessarily grow. And everybody's still trying to continue to grow, continue mm-hmm. to grow. And off my platform, that gives me my opportunity for brand deals and other forms of income beyond just living off my fan base. Yeah, And in a way that I'm comfortable doing. And in a way that I'm comfortable doing. Mm-hmm. Yes, because every artist doesn't want to be like, dang, I got to get all my money just off of my fans. So... Like, I'm not living unless I figure out how to text them uncomfortably and always ask for something. So we could talk this whole, yeah, you know, get control of your fan base, have your own website or, or email or whatever. But we also got to acknowledge that's valuable, but we don't want to that our ideal situation requires both. Yeah. Right. So you want these platforms. What does that look like? Well, this is where we get into the fact that DJ Academics made a money move that he determined to be good for himself. And people are coming at him. Let's figure out why. But first, we can just start with academics himself talking about this deal. And we'll just allow him to, you know, let it be in his words. These academics rumble. Okay. The news has been broken that academics will now be streaming on rumble. And we're going to talk through all of this. By the way, I'm only here. By the way, this is a multi-million dollar deal that he's done on the platform and before he goes into some of the details of why he's in the platform imagine the exclusivity deals there's been many of these deals on these platforms youtube is done with many of their to my creators audience. where you guys have been with me through they give you lump sums a, over a big journey live multi-million streaming. dollar really only bags. started live streaming not to do anything but have a connection show your loyalty to the platform that type of cash out is different just than just saying hey i'm going to be loyal because i'm getting a lot of advertising dollars and most of my fans know here you don't really get the bigger bags until you leverage the fact that you have that base right so this is what he did in his case and another thing before we get deeper into this is taking it taking your leverage to a brand that has a greater need is where you're going to find the cash outs yeah. a lot of time. Right. Rumble is a new platform. Hey, buddy, yes. They're, they're going to you know I mean? allow academics to get a certain amount of money and all the other creators that they're offering money, right. The Andrew Tate's of the world, et cetera. They're going to give them that money because they're trying to compete. Mm-hmm. Right. They want market share. They want market share. And I, you know, we'll get deeper into that though, as academics talks, cause I feel like he's going to talk about something. I don't, I don't want to explain yeah, myself to my audience. You, you guys, guys have been, been with me through an over 10 year journey live streaming. We really only started live streaming, not to make money, not to do anything, but have a connection in the community. That's where our community was born. The chat is something that's really special to me because I have a bigger audience. But those people, they come and go. You guys have been with me since day one. And I owe you the respect of giving you the explanation of everything I do when it comes to live streaming. All right. Now. In short, why Rumble Academics was in a very interesting part of his streaming career. And not only did I like Rumble as a platform, I think it's allowed a lot of creators to say what they want to say and do what they want to do in terms of making content. 
I thought it was a great place to move my audience, right? That could support us. The CEO, I have a direct connection with him. He's going to be supporting our content and we could build our community here. Not that it's completely cut off from other places, but a place that would support us like how we would support it. You know, I've been, I've been a part of many different platforms where, you know, like, shoot, I just got a partner manager the other week on YouTube. Something happens, you get a strike, no one talks to you, no one cares. No, it's like, yo, you're just literally shit beneath their feet. You feel me? When it comes to even Twitch, you know, again, I've had a strained relationship with them, but it's gotten better. You know, I, I, I'm not, this is not a bash Twitch stream, okay? And when it comes to even Instagram and other platforms like that. So an opportunity came up that said, hey, listen, you could stream exclusively on our platform. And also, you know, within reason, you could stream on other platforms as well, but you should try to build a community over at Rumble. I believe it was a, 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 a great opportunity that obviously was incentivized, as you could probably already tell. But it gave me an opportunity to be at a platform that was going to be fully in support of what we wanted to build, which is community, give us a fair shake, and also a place we could call home. So that's the reason why I thought about the Rumble deal. Um, I ultimately signed uh, after I realized that it would not only be in our best interest, but be in the best interest of everybody that watches me because it wouldn't isolate all the people that watch me. Okay. You know, all right. So it's a couple of things that he's saying right here where one, he realized Republicans wear Jordans too. <laughs> that that whole <laughs> statement that Michael Jordan said slash didn't say whatever, you know, we don't know is actually real. Is that type of statement. Like, I don't want my audience cut off based off of the politics of the platform mm -hmm. versus what necessarily my politics is. And I just threw Republicans because that's that statement, but like whatever the belief system, et cetera, these platforms have gotten to the point where they're showing their own belief system of what's right and wrong, whether it's driven by the people at the business or the people who are prevalent on the platform. And you're like, yo, look, I'm just here to talk about the stuff I'm here to talk about. And I want the money and attention from all those people who want this message and, and care about these topics that I talk about. Yeah. All right. It's that simple. And then we talks about the relationship again. This is where we go back to competitive advantage. Yo, they're newer. So the CEO cares more because there's higher stakes. They have a lot of investors and they are trying to grow. They truly are trying to figure out, well, what do these creators want? How do I pull more big creators onto the platform that can help? bring users to my platform so because it really matters to me then you matter to me as a creator and that's some of the benefits of like if you let's just say you did get on rumble being somebody who early um who pops on the platform early because yeah. you're a case study for them yeah all right they're trying to create stars in the same way that tiktok was trying to create artists right artists artists let's sign artists let's blow them up we'll do what we can so then we can say hey artists look at these artists who blew up off tiktok Y'all get on TikTok too. We got to be able to sell hope. Yeah. You got to create hope before you can sell it though. So some artists and managers are just waiting for lucky moments when the ones who are killing it have systems to consistently take artists to another level over and over again. And if you want to see what that looks like, we just did a collab where we not only show the system that we use that's resulted in billboard hits, some of the biggest viral moments on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube, but also we got J.R. McKee to break down how he took an artist from zero to one of the biggest hit songs of 2022 and getting a Grammy in January of 2023. This is recent stuff, not old tactics. If you want to check it out, go to www dot brandmannetwork.com slash Grammy. Don't forget the WWW or it won't work because JR gets into the details of looking at the data, decisions that got made, how much content got created and how they adjusted the content over time for different parts of the campaign. This is real behind the curtains type of stuff. So again, go to www.brandmannetwork.com slash Grammy. If you want to check this out and apply it to yourself, back to the video. All right. So those are a couple of things that academics are leaning into. But let's go deeper into this video because I think what I like about it is just the insight of a high tier creator on these platforms with certain visibility and who's not doing it from a completely corporate side where he has all these people who will push buttons because he is a pretty independent mm -hmm. um, ran operation. And what it's like mentality wise in terms of how they're looking at the marketplace, the deals and how they make decisions. Again, I want all you guys to somehow make a Rumble account this and third, 
But I also understand that some of you guys won't necessarily come over quickly. Or some of you guys might just still be on Twitch or still stay on um, YouTube. That's not the point of this. It's not to force you, guys, force your hand, not to try to pimp out my audience. I appreciate you guys, and that's that, that, that's the first and utmost thing. Okay, so the next question about why Rumble, and I've seen this like today a lot, is a lot of people... By the way, I got to address that real quick. He said uh, he understands that everybody's not going to come over. He's not even trying to force people. Like that's just a sit, like a veteran at work. Where look, man, you don't have the expectations that everybody's gonna come over. Yeah, like come you know, if you will, don't come if you don't. Come if you will, right? And there's a lot of people who are always overly concerned about transitioning from TikTok to Instagram or Instagram to TikTok or YouTube, and thinking all those numbers are just gonna move and it's not moving fast enough. Like something's wrong with the platform. It's like no, that's just a reality. People take time to move. All right, so. That's just another note to take. Who have now said, yo, academics is going all right. You know, obviously, when some people think about Rumble, they think about politics. And honestly, I really thought about it as a platform, but I didn't know there were politically charged individuals on the platform. For example, I believe Donald Trump exclusively, exclusively streams to Rumble, um, Stephen Crowder. But I do know Andrew Tate's there as well, right? Now, I'm going to be very honest. And I'm going to be very, very super honest and transparent. Speaking with the CEO, and by the way, this was a me and the CEO, man to man, okay, I believe in you, you're believing in me type of thing. He clearly stated to me, hey, listen, people have incorrectly just been labeling us as a political platform. We're much more than that. We want to get into other realms. We want to get into music, gaming, sports. We want to get into other things more than politics. Let's keep it real. It's the same thing that academics basically just said on why he's going over there. Yeah, I don't want to cut off my audience. They don't want to cut off their audience either. Yeah. However, it's an opportunity right now. Yeah, Like the politics got me popping. So we're going to lean in to those people because those people have a motivated reason to be over here. We're going to use that energy, create some type of base, and then move into other categories. But we want all the money. Everybody wants all the money. And I wouldn't be surprised if Rumble ha ha actually like lasts long enough, becomes big enough, I wouldn't be surprised if the primary political groups who were on Rumble at some point, five years down the line, 10 years down the line, be, be become angry because now they're like, Rumble, y'all are supporting these other politics or X, Y, and Z type of thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Because I we're just trying to be big, bro. We want everybody. We don't just want y'all. Yeah, I can see that. I, I mean, I think as long as they keep the 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 free speech free reign policy kind of going they'll they'll be able to play both sides but that's why they can play both sides now where it's like hey yeah. we're not a political platform we are a free speech platform it's yeah a difference you know right right but you know we politicize the idea of free speech yeah. we, you know we politicize everything you know what i mean that shit crazy <laughs> but the academic side of this is even just the brand association that yeah. is something you have to think through he just said yeah, they're saying academics is going all right just because I'm positioned over there. And trust me, man, you get benefits from your position that you don't necessarily deserve. And your position can also give you uh, issues issues that <laughs> you don't necessarily deserve. It's like, bro, I'm just here. Yeah. You know what I mean? I walked in the, you know, outside at the wrong time and it was these dudes, you know what I mean, ganged up. <laughs> and now you think I wanted it. It was like, bro, I, was, I just came over here to get some candy. You know what I'm saying? So, like your position does matter for sure. Uh, and it's something to think through. Let's see if he talks further into that, though. Truth be told, and he might not like me saying it, but he said, Ack, to be honest, I'd rather you stay away from politics. We just want you to do what you do. What do I do? I get on here. I have fun with y'all. We talk shit. We watch videos. We get on Discord. We rant. We rave. We have a good time. This is not. This is nothing about politics. And I'm not here also to defend um, or I don't think I have to be here to tell y'all what I think the platform stands for. I believe the platform is a platform. They approach me saying they want to move away from politics, move away from being known for just politics into culture and music. And that is what enticed me. Something that he's doing right here that's really good, though. And this is a part of the PR and understanding your fan base. Talk to your fucking fan base. Yeah, let them know what's up. Be you make real. a move like this. Talk to your fan base. This is textbook because, yeah, all these other people are going to think what they think, but the people who care about you, they're at least going to listen, right? Mm -hmm. But you have to actually put that statement out there. You can't just be like, oh, I don't care. Are y'all going to figure it out? Da, 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 da. Like, have that moment. Break it down to them. So now your fan base 
can argue with anybody else for you. Like, nope, at guy at point one, two, three, four, five. This is why this makes sense. It has nothing to do with what you got going on. And you gave them ammo to go to war for you. Oh, yeah, facts. I've been out here. <laughs> and even just bigger than that, it's letting you know that their investment in you wasn't in vain. Because think about, like, the diehard Twitch fans of his, right? The ones that don't donated money every stream. You know, imagine, like, you give $100 to your favorite credit on the platform. You already like it, and he just jump ship to somewhere else. You're kind of like, damn, like I've already invested in you over here mm. and I don't really want to go over there. You know, yeah. so it's like you kind of got like your two, these two big boulders holding you back and he got rid of that, right? He's like, hey, like your investment is, is invalid because look, this, look at what I'm trying to do and what is kind of going on for me here. And look, man, you can call me if you want to. If you don't, I understand. It's your choice, right? Like you're right. Like he did it the right, the right PR way. But I look at it like that, bro, because I'm a fan that's been donating money and you just jump ship. Like, no, nah, I need an explanation. You know what I'm saying? Where my yeah. money going? Like, where we, where we at with it? Exactly. <laughs> Wow. Exactly. <laughs> okay, simply that. They didn't come to me to say, yo, we want you to vote for Trump. Hey, we want you to have this ideology. Hey, could you push this type of narrative? They didn't come to me with nothing like that. Hey, yo, by the way, we had even other conversations. They said, yo, listen, who's the most popping like artist that you think would be great on Rumble? They don't want those people to come on there to, to be in politics or nothing like that. They want people to come on there and do what they do. Just like how you seen Young Boy on AMP, he's on there doing what he does. He's not on there pushing the AMP agenda. There's no AMP agenda. It's a platform. And that's just simply what it is. So, you know, I've seen a lot of people today, and I'm going to pull up with some of the some of the list of people who are just kind of, you know, going crazy. And, and, and let me put some, put some of these things up. The first time I see this, this guy named Phil Lewis. Not too sure who he is, but I've always seen him it says he's a senior editor for the Huffington Post. Now, I always see him post things. And to be honest, I haven't even reposted what he said on my Instagram. But I saw that he um, posted like yesterday. Let me see if I could find it. So he says, new academics have signed an exclusive live streaming agreement with right-winged video sharing platform Rumble. Now, again, I don't know if that's Rumble's motto. From speaking to the CEO and everybody that I've talked to, they don't have a political agenda. They don't give a fuck if someone gets on their platform and says, yo, vote for Daffy Duck or vote for Donald Duck. They don't give a fuck. But I'm not here to defend Rumble, right? Um, but I see certain people in the black community, and I'm going to say hip-hop community, really, started to make this angle like, yo, academics is on some other shit. You feel me? And, you know, the only reason why I dropped the podcast today off the record, the only reason why I did it is simply because I don't want people to misconstrue me making a platform choice. Like, no one said when I was on Twitch in 2013... Yo, Ak is on this platform that leans this way. Nobody says it about me being on Twitter, which if you look at the Twitter files, man. That's a tough part about being a brand and out there today. Mm. Everybody taking some kind of sides. And again, they expect you to. They expect you to. You're in a position, not even trying to be in a position. You just outside posting, posting, posting. Next thing you know, these platforms like, oh, hey, you, you with us, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the audience is like you with us, and, and that's tough yeah. <laughs> because we also can't act like there there hasn't been significant right wing support for Rumble and like pundits that have pushed it because of what they deem to be free speech or however they see things. So it is in many ways not look. We can say that the people who created the platform are not necessarily right wing. We could try to say that, but the reality is. There's a lot of right wing support on it. And when those are your early users in the same way, they want to talk to academics. They're willing to have conversations and make um, adjustments for him. And be because they're early on and they're just trying to win. Well, when you mean when you have a right wing base who is early on and sees you as an opportunity, you're like, well, what do I need to help you all out? Like th they probably figure out how to invest and they probably do have their own agendas. So, you know, that's just the way it goes. Like the interest of your early users matters a lot to you. Yeah, and it sounds like too, you know, I wonder if it's kind of the CEO realizing what he was doing by leaning into that, right? Because to your point, a lot of those early creators that were trying to entice over to Rumble were very controversial creators. Yeah. Andrew Tate, he mentioned Donald Trump. The Fresh and Fit podcast was one of the first part. Like, it's like all of these like controversial content creators. I think DJ, even actually, even DJ Academics is controversial. Now that I think about it, yeah, he's yeah, very he controversial. You know what I'm saying? So like they, I, I think to your point, it's like, hey, okay, we got too wrapped up in the right wing controversy 
let's just go for all controversy. You know what I'm saying? Like, because it's more money in all controversy, right? All controversy attracts a different range of different range of people. Right wing contra- controversy attracts a very certain group of people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I can I can see that because again, from a business standpoint, you're always gonna want the max if you can. However, just from the political standpoint. You kind of have to appease, appease to those early users. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. I think that could it could have just been like early platform worlds, right? Like, like to your point, this is what's popping right now here. Either we lean into it and help it grow, so we grow, or, or we kill it off, which would also kill us off. You know what I'm saying? Hey, yeah, they so, they def- right wing definitely got their nuts in their hands. Yeah, facts. For the moment, <laughs> for the moment, they gonna they probably trying to figure out how can I scheme and how can I go get that money without this money being mad at me, but. Right now, that just is what it is. Yeah. It's an inch accordingly. <laughs> music and entertainment might be a good way to, to try to bring that in. Yeah, music always the answer. Mm-hmm. It, it, it leads that way. So I don't know why this is a narrative that came with Rumble, but simply put, and the only thing I can say is that I just made a platform choice. By- you don't know why. Come on now. Just chill out. By the way, you know, and I, I don't want to call out any other platform. There was other platforms that was trying to sign me as well. I went with a platform that seemed like they were the best fit for me at this time. You know, uh, my, my man Chris was was very accommodating. And also, you know, he made sure I was comfortable in any of my asks or demands. I think it was very reasonable. And because of that, just like any other businessman, I said, okay, cool. I'm going to sign this deal. That's it. Now, what this tweet actually triggered was a lot of other people who have now said that academics is spewing alt-right propaganda. And this was hilarious. This was hilarious. First and foremost, I ain't going to lie. It didn't help me that... I had a, uh, I had a picture. <laughs> this was a, my last tweet. I'm gonna show you. It didn't help me that this was my last tweet. Yo, is this actually Donald Trump? Yeah, I think so. This can't be, bro. Oh, maybe like a lookalike somewhere. Yeah, I was like, oh. This look like a dude with a Donald Trump mask on, bro. I, I, he looked like he got Trump face on. I said, might have to take up Uncle Trump on his offer of being his vice president in 2024. Bro told me, no way you'd be worse than Kamala. Now, I'm going to go I'm going to go back uh, a little and explain that as well. First and foremost, you know, it saddens me that the people who have never supported my content are the biggest critics of it. Let me just say it again. The people who have never supported my content are the biggest critics of it. That's a bar. That's why he repeated that his audience going to really take that in. You know, when small minded people and people who have always hated you and you have to realize at a certain point, it doesn't matter what I've done. Y- y'all have seen this before. Whether shade room or other things, they're always going to contextualize it in the do I like him or not. I've always told you it's better to be liked than to be right. When 2013, when I started streaming, and I went on a gaming streaming website, which was Twitch at the time, and I started doing conversational commentaries type of stuff, hip-hop type of stuff. Now, one of these motherfuckers who've been hating, and we're going to get some of the hate in a little bit. I'm glad he mentioned that, actually, because that goes back to our point. The uh, Rumble starting political, but once they grow out of that, Twitch was gaming, gaming, yep. gaming, gaming, night and day. And obviously, they're expanding beyond it. Ever said, yo, academics is breaking down the doors. He's paving the way. He's being um, an innovator. He's showing that this platform could be used for different things. Not one of these motherfuckers said that. They only came around once they hear about a deal about another platform. So they don't give you credit when you're doing it. They don't give you credit when you're building it. They don't acknowledge you when you're doing anything that's helping the culture. But yeah, so that's all y'all need to see in this clip. We wanted to really just break that down because we there's rare moments where we get to see someone transparently and without the platform of like the internet, um, politics shows, just like on your own platform, talking directly to your fans in a real way and explaining this is why I made this move. Yes, there's some controversy of it. And this is what it looks like from my end. All right. So that's a PR moment for sure. As Corey mentioned, that's a moment of what it looks like to continue with your fan base, the um, talk mission, mission, like give them the messaging and let them know why they should continue to support you. Because there's going to be all types of questions that your fans do have. And when you do have a, a real fan base, if you end up in some shit, uh, it's, it behooves you to give them some answers and again, give them some ammo so they can continue to defend not only internally, but externally to these people who are, end up coming at them. Because, look, you know, especially in the black community, boy, no matter what, like if, if you end up in some shit and it don't even have to be 
like some political crazy shit, you know, it, it automatically becomes your boy. You're like, oh man, you know your boy. That's the that's the Corey boy. You know? <laughs> He's like, there you go. And now you got to sit there and defend. Like, hey, man, look, man, he don't really mean X, Y, and Z. This is why academics did such, such and such. All right, you got to give them that because they are going to get the get the flames. And don't make a fan have to go through feeling so bad being or feeling worse than they have to be. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's one thing to feel bad and kind of go through a little bit of bullying, but to feel completely hopeless and helpless like he left them out on the desert with nothing to say, that's a whole nother, another feeling. Yeah, we need the ammo, man, because like I said, it was just <laughs> all, all week since we got announced, man. Um, hey. But it's cool to see, you know, because uh, I, I wish it was in, in this clip, but there was a, another stream that he did where he talked a lot about, you know, to your point, like all of the kind of benefits of being over there first. The mm -hmm. feedback loop is tighter. Um, mm -hmm. you know, they're actually taking ideas that I have or suggestions I have and seriously considering them. I'm seeing things get implemented, right? So it's like you almost they still trying to figure the shit out, to yeah. be real. Yeah, they probably like, please, man, like whatever, whatever <laughs> the sauce you got from your Twitch, bro, please let us know. You know what I'm saying? Um But then he also had a conversation about the the car thing, right? So there was the, mm -hmm. the numbers floating around. Kyle only made two million dollars doing his 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 streamathon or subathon, whatever they call it, right? So for those that don't know, that's when he, he streamed like twenty four hours a day for like a month straight. Yep. Um so it was reported that he made like he he netted like two million dollars Amazon netted like like ten to fifteen. And academics point in that was one, like this is a platform that that bans you without giving you a chance to fight your case. Right. And he he goes and make the point like, man, I have a I have a Twitch rep. And I'm not costing that. Like, why don't you have someone? Why don't you and Aiden and all these different people have people that you can talk to directly to help you out? Granted, you know, it might be one of those things where the talent doesn't know they have the access, but the team might know they have the access in, mm -hmm. in, in Kai and Aiden's defense. But that's a great point to, to act, right? You just made these people $15, $20 million. There's no reason you shouldn't be able to contact somebody directly. At least and, talk to somebody. Yeah, for sure. exactly. And figure out, like, what's going on, right? Second thing he brought up was um, when he did it, uh, Twitch sent Kyle a, pa a pair of like custom sneakers. You know what I'm saying? Um, it was like a thank you thing. Like, here's some shoes, right? And DJ Academics point is like, hey, Try well. The shit out of me. Exactly. I, think I just want some sneakers, like, bro. Yeah, like $500 a pair of custom sneakers. I would have rather took another one and two million out of this 15 to 20. The only that thing that could have been me. worse than that was giving me a chain, bro. Good offense. That, that's offensive. Bro. Yeah, it's right there. It's like, <laughs> the, I should probably prefer the chain over the shoes. I'm not going to lie. At least the chain could be resold. You know what I'm saying? Like smelted or something, you know, depending <laughs> on what it gets made from. <laughs> um, and then the, the third point was what we're seeing DJ Academics do with Rumble and Switches. He made the point to Kyle, like, hey, I don't want to tell you how to run your business, but you need to throw your weight around more and, and use it to leverage opportunities with these different platforms while you're still as hot as you are. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Because, you know, we, we've seen it with different entertainers. How many entertainers have we seen over the years become massive stars on, let's say, like a YouTube or Instagram or something like that, and then they fall off? But Instagram is still hot. YouTube is still hot. Twitter is still hot. Right. So DJ Academics' point is like, hey, flip your brand and do what you got to do to make the most off of these platforms. But like, don't care so much about, like, I guess, like their future and things because they don't really care as much about yours. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You know what I'm saying? So why are you? moving in a way it's like the point you made earlier right like we was like hey don't become so buddy buddy with the platforms right but platforms are really good at making you feel like that when you mm -hmm. first start getting hot you in exclusive events they're giving you features and shit that like other users of the platform know they don't have access to right so you look special yep you're paying more you're getting certain partner things but that's all why you're hot and as soon as you're not hot you really ain't no different than the, the starting streamer you know what i'm saying yep. except you got you got a little bit of a, of a name already so you know, and, and so I agree with these academics there, right? It's like a platform like Rumble is coming along and offering these big creators these crazy deals at a time when we're they're simultaneously getting fed up with Twitch and Instagram mm -hmm. and Twitter. YouTube ain't really been catching no smoke. YouTube surprisingly has been smoke free yeah. for hey, a minute, man. you know. Like, they had their they had their time, you know, but they've been, yeah. you know, so it's like, but it's coming along at a time where like creators are starting to get upset with these other platforms. Oh yeah, that's just crazy. Um <laughs> And it's like it's the it's the perfect time for like both sides. Like perfect time for Rumble to come in and, and steal some talent away, but also the perfect time for different creators of various sizes to just like throw their weight around. You yeah, know what I'm saying? yeah, it's crazy, man. These are ugly ass sneakers they gave him too, bro. That's tough. <laughs> That's tough. I was like, give me an extra M. 
Ah, hey, yeah. Look, we could go on for that for days, but I, I'll say this and leave it at this point. We ain't have the, the time to really argue on it like we want to, but the consumers, I know that they said, hey, Kai Sinat should get more money, but one, bro, didn't get signed a contract. You knew you were going to do this 24 7 stream for 30 days ahead of time. You planned to do that. You had yeah. to get your resources together. Somebody should have been like, yo, we can get a brand deal for this. Yeah. Right? Or get some type of deal with somebody because you already are popping. You're at a level where you know there's going to be weight thrown around. So you know you're probably going to break some records. But even the novelty of the idea is something worth watching. So should have been a brand deal. Should have got some money. Period. All right. Beyond just streaming on a platform. I don't know how much or what they done, have done. But with, with Twitch, they didn't do that. Mm -hmm. Now, because they could have used that concept to then say, well, we're going to do it on this platform or this platform or this other platform and said, which is what academics said. He advises. Yeah. All right. He's like, hey, man, you need to throw that weight around a lot more. So one, that's just a business. Why would I choose to give him more money just because just because he decided to use the platform and he was happy doing that? Yeah. All right. Why would I choose? He did that. That was his idea. We didn't ask him to do that. All right. Yeah. We already yeah. gave him an audience anyway. And also, he's not the only creator. I'm Yes, he's most popular, but he's not the only. And it's a moment in time. There were other on, there were other top creators before he was a top creator. Yeah. All right. So the platforms don't see it like that. Now, then from a business standpoint, if I start breaking down expenses of these servers, you know what I'm saying? Maintaining everything else and, and the interactions between like all oh, that thing, all oh, that cost, right? Yeah. So without you making a deal specifically, I'm just supposed to offer that up. That's not realistic for anybody on any side of it, right? You're not just supposed to just, oh, we're so thankful that you did that. That was cool. Like, I would prefer me, I would have preferred that they sent, send me nothing than send me them damn sneakers. Yeah, I agree. Like, yeah. you know, it just happened. Like, the, the sneakers is the offense. <laughs> the offense. Send me a plaque Because now it yeah. tells me that you know that you probably should give me something and I did something great, but then you're going to shit on me with this. Yeah. I'd rather you just be uh, appear to be clueless or have, be indifferent yeah. <laughs> than do this. And also to Kai's point, too, about the whole situation, Kai isn't really making a big deal about it. It's other yeah. creators that are kind of like, whoa, yeah. bro, you let them do this to you? You know what I'm saying? Um, and like his fans, of course, but he seems to be happy with it, probably because of exactly what you said. Hey, I wanted to do it anyway. I was already here, you know. Mm -hmm. Shit, I ain't expecting to make two million in thirty days. You know what I'm saying? It's, you know. Um, but that that to me is also what's so inter interesting about DJ Academics' perspective on it because it is, you know, I look at it like like in two ways. Well, one way really, there's the seasoned content creator who's been through a lot of the things that Kai's been through. Maybe not to the same degree, but he's been there. He's you know what I'm saying he's been there with everyday struggle and complex and all these things, right? Versus Kai's viewpoint on it being from, you know, the pain of a, a young, you know, lit streamer that's just happy to be here. But I think that Kai, like I said, I'm like, hey, I'm not trying to tell you how to run your business, but I've been here, learn from this because we've seen what's happened to other creators and I just want you to be smart. So I, I, I appreciate seeing both sides of it and, and kind of following what's going on there. Facts. Facts. Well, look, y'all, we'd love to know what y'all think about this, man, and how you would navigate this situation or if it's just at least something that you could learn from it. But other than that, this is yet another episode of No Labels Necessary Podcast. I'm Brand Man Sean. And I'm Corey. And we out. Peace.